and on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. He said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The historic ecumenical council, Vatican II, comes to a close amid colorful pomp and pageantry. Considered one of the most important councils in Catholic Church history. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Vatican II produced 16 documents designed to modernize the role of the church in world affairs. The final blessing is for the assembled throng and for the world. Ite in pace, go in peace. With those words, Pope Paul VI closed the Second Vatican Council. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I wish I could spend more than a few minutes with you, but the polls don't close in the East for another hour, and there are plenty of election results still left to falsify. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. You go by the name Dr. Jacobs on your show, and I didn't know if maybe your listeners were confused by that and assumed you had advanced training in psychology, theology, or health care. I don't believe they are confused, no, sir. Good. I like your show. I like how you call homosexuality an abomination. I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 18.22. Chapter and verse. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, 
leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards. Oh, no. What's he doing? He needs to go what he's doing. You bought 4,800 shares and a half GK. You bought 4,000 shares and a half ATS. You leave 15,000? 15,000. All right, listen, I'm going after you. Listen, you bought 4,400 shares and a half book. He's almost done. He leaves nothing. In Manchester, New Hampshire's Reverend Gene Robinson, Episcopal Bishop of New Hampshire, the first openly gay priest to be ordained a bishop of a major Christian denomination. He naturally supports uh, same-sex marriage. Reverend Robinson, how are you reacting to this decision? I know from uh, 1 John chapter 4 that uh, where love is, God is. Uh, it says that if we know love, we know God. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities.